Welcome back to Dark Souls 3. We're doing a rare episode where we get right into the action here in the uh, the Ring City. Uh, I, I wanted to... Uh, we, we're going to go dragon hunting here in not too long. But I did want to take care of a little bit of unfinished business with this uh, particular individual right here. The Moaning Knight. Now, interestingly enough, he kind of looks like a... Uh, What's the end of- I forget what his name is. The- the- the knight who is sort of looking after the miracle lady. Looking after Irina. He kind of has the same general look about him. Uh, as I recall, it's like the Knights of Kareem, right? I don't remember what his name is, but... Yeah. 2v1 is, uh, is feeling real bad right now. Okay. Making a little bit of progress. I would love to take care of this skeleton. I'm running out of real estate here. We're just sort of firing and retreating. I would love the skeleton to come in front. He has not done so yet. Oh, man. Oh! Alright, hey. Well, this is... I don't know if this is progress. This is something. Alright, we're gonna go down here again. We're going to run it back. Um, there he is up there. Okay. So at this point, I should be able to just take him on properly. Alright, he's got a nice big shield there. And down he goes. Farewell, Moaning Knights. Actually, a decent amount of souls gain from, from get it, killing that guy, which is surprising considering we got, what, a mere pittance? Like 4,000 souls for for beating uh, Silver Knight, what's his name? Leto? But good, I guess. Uh, and we're also knocking on the door of Great Magic Weapon, which is something that we want to invest in, especially if we're going to be fighting a dragon here shortly. Medir is gone from sight, but not from our general awareness. We know he is still around somewhere, lurking, waiting to be fought. 57,000 souls, we need, need another, what is that, 40, 39, 38-ish thousand? Let's go ahead and uh, invest in our future, we'll call it. Uh, let's see, 38,000... 40,000, that'll, that'll be fine. Ashen one. Well, speak. And then let's level up and grab another level in intelligence up to 30 now. There we go. Farewell, Ashnace, thou. And so where are we in terms of our sorcery uh, attunement? Let's see. We have this right now, which is 10. We want to get to the point where we have, what's 15? Great magic weapon. Okay. Anything else? We could do Heavy Soul Arrow right now. Should we take that for a spin? Let's take Heavy Soul Arrow for a spin. How about that? Uh, and then back to the Shared Grave. So, Moaning Knight has been dispatched of. Um, oh, Egon. Egon was his name. I just had a brain blast. So that looked like the same uh, the same armor type as the, uh, the Knights of Kareem, I suppose. We're ready, we're ready to, to fire off our, uh, our heavy soul arrow. Interested to see how much damage we do. This is the most advanced of the two DLCs, plus we're, we're right at the end game, so I don't suspect we're going to be doing a ton of damage to whoever we fight. Um, so, of course, last episode we, un we briefly uncovered... Uh, there's that guy in there. We briefly uncovered this elevator, and I did not stop to look to see if there was something, any, anything tricksy about the elevator. Because um, there is a hole in the ceiling right here, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility that there's a way to manipulate this elevator in such a way. Try hidden path, bonfire head. So there's a, there's a hidden path that's being implied. 
Let's see if there's like an area that we can roll off. Because if we're going to be going up into the ceiling, stands to reason there'll be some somewhere for us to roll off, right? Right? Huh. I sure didn't see anything. Let's look around. Oh, there's one. Oh, no. Okay. I saw it that time. Well, thank you to the messages. That was very, very helpful. And there we go. All right, there's a blood stain right away, which is ominous. Oh, then there's as uh, as as desired. This has got to be pretty good, right? <laughs> Chlorinthine ring plus three. It was like it was like that was tailor made for me. Hell yes. Uh, where where can I see what what stats it's? Uh, I mean, I I know it's stamina recovery. I just wanted wanted to know like from a numerical standpoint, how much more is it increasing? Anyway, it doesn't really matter when all said and done. Uh, cool. Well, thank you, Gwyn. Uh, looks like Gwyn loves loves dex builds apparently because that's what he was holding. <laughs> That feels huge, especially if the bosses for this DLC are going to be exceptionally tough, which I suspect they must be, considering how Sister Frida went. Alright, so we went that way, now we're going to go this way. Take a look at these statues. More black slash silver knights. Could this be an illusion, really? Oh, it is an illusion! Well, thank you. Thank you to the message. Praise the message. Mm okay. A lot of blood stains. Also, we need to jump over this gap. To grab? Philonor's spear ornament. So Philonor is the princess, right? Is there is there anything here? Any secrets? No, not really. Philonor is the princess. Uh Whose handmaiden we uh, we chatted to briefly, even though we were rudely interrupted by the the hole in the head knights. Okay, what have we here? More King Seeker Frampta statues, antiquated plain garb, violet wrappings, ember ahead. If only I had a duo. What, where, what ember? Over here? Huh. I'm not sure what that is implying. Let's take a look at the, the violet wrappings. I'm not sure who that was implied to be. Um, antiquated plain garb, shadow garb, sorcerer robe, scholar's robe. Ah, uh, maybe it's like, maybe it's a head thing? Blindfold mask, we did pick that up earlier. An eye occluding mask of unknown origin, small cracks allow the wearer to see. Strengthens dark attacks, but also greatly increases damage sustained from dark. This purple steel creation has a certain resemblance to the Firekeeper's crown, but the similarity is purely cosmetic. <laughs> the white preacher head. Awesome. An empty head of a white-faced locust that rose from an abyssal swamp. The white-faced locusts were meant to beckon men to the dark with sermons, but most of them are unable to think past their own stomachs. Someone must rise to the occasion and restore the path of righteousness. Perhaps that someone is you. Did you not arise from the abyss and did you not resist drowning in the Age of Fire? Locusts and men are kindred spirits. Why do I feel like the text is trying to persuade me of something? That feels uncomfortable to me. Here we go, violet wrappings. These arm wrappings sewn with violet cloth and embroidered with gold thread were intended for everyday use. Yet they served well enough and in many a battle in wreathing the arms of one who would go on to embrace the sword. I don't know who that is, but... May they rest in peace wherever they are. Oh! I didn't mean to do that. Whoa! Oh, there's... There's our dragon friend. Okay. Well, kind of. I kind of wish I had great magic weapon right now, or just any magic weapon. Um. 
Okay, so we're fighting a dragon. Now, dragons are, are weak to to lightning, right? That not that a thing? Uh, just like throughout most Dark Souls. I'm also tempted to Ember here, but... You know what? Let's... Let's... Let's do it. Let's go... Let's go ahead and Ember up real quick, even though it might all be for naught. Because this is our first time facing a, a freaking dragon. I'm just interested to see. Uh, okay, we'll two-hand it. And then, what else do we want to do? Um... I mean, I guess we'll throw some of this lightning gold pine bundle, but this is this is mostly going to be for learning move sets, I suspect. Look, you're clearly playing possum. Yeah, I was going to say, Dark Eater Madeer. All right, hit him once. There we go. Uh oh. Let's stick uh, as close to him as possible. From my my brief recollection of Sin the Slubbering Dragon, as well as Calamite, it's like, I think I want to stay under here as much as possible. Right? Isn't that, isn't that the general idea? And I really wish I could lock on to, like, individual paws. Uh-oh, I'm out of stamina. Oh, okay. He he likes to fire right underneath. Him. That's good to know. All right, I gotta get better at this claw, evading those claw attacks. Okay, Ember again, or not Ember? Uh. Whoa. Okay, now what? Let's keep circling, just in case. Alright, that's better. Man, he's got so much health. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm barely scratching the guy. Uh-oh. What now? Okay, let's chase him. As much as possible. Oh, that was a waste. The belly seems like a decent place to be, actually. To hit him. Oh, brother. Okay. Hang on. Heal again. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. All right. When he turns around to do that fire. Alright. Not bad. Uh oh. Oh no, what's happening here? Whoa! Okay, we're in the phase two now, it feels like. Oh no. Okay. Can I get in his foot? Not really. Man, every attack he does, it's like half a health bar. Oh no, I got stuck in the fire again. Alright, almost out of Estus. Not bad. Alright, he's doing fire here, right? Oh, I couldn't quite get out of there. I need, like, a fire resist, uh, ring or something. Alright, not terrible. I wish there was a way to, like, stagger him. Oh, no. Alright, get out of there. Did I get out of there? Oh, I actually, I actually made it out. Okay. Oh, no. chase him. Interestingly, like, he hasn't really flown much, you know? Oh, brother. He's done a lot of, like, stomping about. But not a whole lot of, uh... Oh, man. Alright, well, not, not terrible for a first attempt. That's what, like, 75%? I feel like, let's redo our, um... 
our loadout real quick. His moveset is not too terribly difficult. He's got a lot of fire. We're probably going to get caught under him uh, for, like, fire... Um, for his, like, fire uh, breath. So let's redo this. Let's, let's f find stuff with high physical, high fire. I feel like ringed knight armor is actually is pretty perfect. We may not, uh, obviously we're not at the point where we can cast Great Magic, magic Weapon at that, this point, so that may not be the move. Uh, winged Knight Leggings, very heavy. What do we got here? Wilhelm's Leggings, not bad. Physical and Fire. Let's see, can we do better than that? Um... Pontiff Knight, slightly less than physical. No, I don't think we want to go less. Dragon Slayer leggings. I mean, obviously, yes, that would work. Interestingly enough, less... Slightly less fire. Out of curiosity, what does the Dragon Slayer armor look like? Oh, I mean... Better in every way. <laughs> I mean, we are fighting a dragon, so it stands to reason, right? Is this maybe what we want to go with? We're going to keep the crown, probably. Um, maybe a slightly better gauntlet? Let's see what we can spare here. We need to get to... Like 60... Okay, Drang Gauntlets is maybe... Slightly better? Hmm. With the, with the weight trade-off, I'm not sure we're going to do much better than that. Let's just check the leggings real quick. Dragon Slayer Leggings would put us slightly over the top. I mean, what we could do is just do Dragon Slayer Leggings and lose the crown altogether. I wonder if that would, would be worth it. You know? Like, what if we were to do something like... I mean, every anything else is going to be objectively worse, obviously. 71... Like, maybe we just go helmetless, unless there's like a super duper light thing that we can wear. Shadow Mask is not bad. Sorcerer Hood is not bad. Conjurator Hood. Weird Preacher Head? No thanks. Okay. Clara Cat? Not, maybe not terrible. Let's see. Conjurator Hood. How's that look? Oh, that's, that's not a terrible look for us. Okay, so we've done that. Um, we've gotten our fire resist up somewhat. I think we'll keep our hunter's ring on. We'll keep Chloranthi. We'll keep Estus. We will go ahead and Ember up right away. Um, I think that will that's probably the best strategy. And then... Well, we may even Green Blossom, you know? Yeah, why don't we throw a Green Blossom on there in one of our slots? Anything else? Maybe even like a full-on gold pine resin. Maybe we'll do that right at the beginning. Okay, cool. I'll show this run back one more time. Um, should we fail in this attempt, then I will not. Uh, I will not repeat it. But just just so we get kind of the full initial experience, I'll show it. So very neat. Uh, I can't recall if I finished my thought, but like. Both Calamite and Sin the Slumbering Dragon had very definitive flying uh, portions, like phases. Like, even if you you did a bunch of damage to them on the ground, they would still... Um, they would still just fly up at some point. I'm not sure if we just got lucky this time with Medir, or if he does he's not he's not really interested in flying all that much because we kind of put a cramp in his style by knocking him off the bridge and he's a, he's a little salty about that or I'm not sure what to think uh, is the long and short of it but I mean obviously keeping him on the ground seems to be to our advantage considering the type of fighter we are I think it's I think it's a decent strategy and so I I say we we keep it going. Alright. Alright, if we get an opportunity to throw on a green blossom, we'll do that. Let's run to the side, looks like. And 
try to get close to his head. Man, the, the camera is so shaky. <laughs> Alright, our, um... Fortunately, our lightning is already gone. Not sure why that is the case. again. Get off easy this time. Uh-oh. Alright. Hey, not bad. Alright. Oh, not again. Yeah, I saw that coming. We are taking a bit less fire damage, though, noticeably. Uh, oh no, okay, that was that was obviously not as good, that was a little sloppy on my part. Okay, let's throw this lightning on properly, there we go, and we should get ready to green blossom up the side, let's actually go ahead and green blossom here, there we go, let's get our Estus uh, selected. alive. Kind of hard to see where he's at, though. Mm. All right. We got a little bit of a hit in there. Heal up again. Let's go down here to the belly. Now, are we fat rolling right now? Have I somehow mis messed up our inventory? It's possible. again. Get ready to run to the side. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's a new one. Okay. Oh, gosh. Classic. Helpful, very uh, robust. I love being able to see inside his character. <laughs> very cool. Alright, feels like he's getting ready to fire underneath himself again. He will run out through his butt. Just like a meal. Like, just like his meal, you know? Whoa. On the side. Okay. Let's go ahead and heal up while we're at it, maybe. Alright, let's follow him. We've got another green blossom if we want it. I think we take it here. Uh, switch to Estus. Ah. Uh. Okay, good. Heal up. Oh no, run away. Oh! Just out of the range. Okay. Oh, now he's doing flying stuff. Okay. Uh-oh. Let's run behind him, maybe? Is that what we do? Ooh. Whoa! Okay. Yikes. Okay, that really tuckered him out, huh? Ah, uh, I wanted to get the tail. Oh, tail.
heal attack, nice. Well done. No, you're kidding me, bro. Okay, heal again. Like, it doesn't feel like an especially tough uh, moveset. It's mostly just... Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Okay. It's just out healing him, really. Okay. This is actually fine. I think. Alright, let's chase him again. I'm stuck. Let's run out of here just in case. Maybe we'll take this green blossom. Okay. And then we'll run out the back through the butt. Let's run back into the butt. Oh, you're kidding me. If only I had a divine blessing right about now, huh? <sighs> Great. All right, so this time let's switch it up a little bit with the old uh, time. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Reason being that it seems like there's been multiple cases where I've been, like, too far away to hit with my my puny little uh, cell sword twin blade range. That way I can get at least two guaranteed hits in, you know. Let's heal up here briefly. And then head in here. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no, I was trying to I was trying to dodge. I swear. That is going to be the death of me. Every time. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, man. Okay, heal up. I'm feeling pretty good, I have to say, overall. Okay. Good to know. Caught me in the iframe. Good to know. Okay, let's get closer. Good tail attack. Oh, I don't stamina. Alright, feels like there's a breath attack coming soon. Sort of. Okay. Chopping away. I got a bit lucky there, I think. Where is he? Alright. Okay. Where is he coming? In the 
splash zone, very much so. Alright, get down here. Oh, run away, run away, run away. Okay, that was pretty good. Oh no. In the sauce right now, what if I were to get underneath them? There we go. Oh, I'm out of stamina. What a time to be out of stamina. I was a little late on that one. Ashy one, Ashen one. Yeah, not bad. I'm not sure if I like that better than the twin blades, though. Okay, back to the OG uh, build. We're gonna be judicious with our healing. It's like, if you're anywhere within the proximity, when the attack begins, there's absolutely no hope of getting out in time. Kinda sucks. It's actually good to know where his head is going to end up, you know what I mean? Uh-oh. Okay. Alright, run out of here. I think we're okay. Camera's a little wonky, though. Oh, what attack was that? Oh, yikes. Get up, get up. Heal twice, I think. I got quite lucky there, I must say. Let him do his thing there. Actually, let's do a budding green blossom, I think. And, um, have stamina for days. There we go. Uh oh. No, are you kidding me? Heal, heal twice. Alright, actually this is fine. This is good. I'll just be way out here for that. Oh! Oh no! I didn't re realize what was happening here. Thank goodness I've got stamina recovery right now. out of there. Alright, this is fine. Um, no. Okay, we're gonna run away. We're gonna take another budding green blossom. We're gonna 
gold pine resin our, our uh, weapon. That's the plan. Oh, no. Run. Oh, no. That's not what I meant to do. <laughs> that was almost less ideal than it even turned out to be. Man, he is not a happy camper right now. Oh, is that a stagger of some kind? I think it is. All right, going all in, baby. One more. Come on. And there we go. Dragon. Man, this is a really sad moment, actually. The final dragon of Dark Souls, I would think, unless they're the, the final boss of, you know, the DLC is a dragon. But Spears of the Church and Soul of Dark Eater Medir. Wow, super cool fight. Super, super cool fight. Now, this is going to be something that I'm going to have to think a lot about because, um, you know, having this, this since this is the final uh, installment of Dark Souls, uh, I, I have now presumably fought all the dragons. There was, let's see, there was Kalamit in Dark Souls 1. There was the Ancient Dragon and Sin the Slumbering Dragon and... The optional ancient dragon, which we didn't fought. The, um... What was it? It was like ancient wyvern or something? Or no, that was in, that was in this one. That was at Archdragon Peak. That was the, that was the wyvern. Um... The, uh, the, it was like called cha the champion dragon or something. That was before you went up to the, uh, the, the ancient dragon's abode sometime in Dark Souls 2. And now, and now, um, Medir. So the thing, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll talk about this later in like a, a planned Dark Souls retrospective. But, um, I don't know, I kind of almost feel like I, I prefer Sin a little bit. Like, I recall the drama for that being extremely intense with like the poison, with the weapon degradation, like degradation effect happening, having to like switch weapons or having my sorcery to repair weapons. Um, that to me, and, and he, he kind of did more of his flying attacks, and so I felt a bit more helpless. Um, so I don't know, Medir, not, definitely not easy, because I didn't get him on the first try, but definitely didn't, doesn't feel like the toughest dragon that I faced, if that makes sense. I don't know, maybe I've just gotten better over time, it's certainly possible. And I mean, I did, did have a very good we weapon and probably was more judicious with my use of uh, consumables here that maybe in previous dragon fights but I just remember banging my head against Calamite for like ages like go back and watch that video like there were a number of attempts there and this I think we did it in what three four something like that so home, yeah. Very well. then no disrespect disrespect whatsoever to Medir like I love the idea of a of a dragon who's channeling the dark, right? That's a very kind of novel concept. And uh, the fact that you kind of see him a bit earlier and, and you kind of, he puts the fear of God in you to some extent, you know? Uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, and, and plus, he might be the, he might be the best, like, design-wise. I'm not sure. Like, him and Sin are kind of up there. I know I'm, I'm giving poor Calamite kind of short shrift for this whole conversation, but... Uh, he's, it's, I mean, those are certainly the top three. Like, there were other dragon fights in the series technically, but, you know, not as uh, robust as this one has felt. There we go. Ashen one. Welcome, speak. Very well, then take... And that wasn't even the final boss of the DLC. <laughs> it kind of has me a little bit worried. I don't even know who there is, who there is left to, to face. Unless, like, that, uh, that kind of beggar, um, guy that we met, like, towards the beginning, unless he's, like, the final boss in disguise, and it's one of those, you underestimated me, and I, I have the greater power, and you should not have looked down on me. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so what are we, what are we at right now? 16 intelligence. Let's take a look at our attunement slot. Didn't end up using <laughs> any spells, uh, but... 
now we have the ability to use a uh, great magic weapon, which I definitely want to use. Let's just see what our general options are. Great soul arrow. Okay. Um, that seems to be the best. I mean, frozen weapons. So we have the, the, the choice between uh, magic and frost for our weapon. That's kind of cool. What else is there of use? Repair. I mean, weapon degradation has not really been a thing so far. I don't know. It's just not uh, not quite what I was expecting. Okay, and then various miracle type things. I mean, honestly, even though we purchased everything from uh, our good friend um, Orbeck, it really looks like a great magic weapon is the best that we're going to do at the moment. Which is not a bad thing at all. Like, a great magic weapon is, well, great. <laughs> like, it's awesome to have. Let's take those things out of here. Um, cool. So with that being said, let's make sure we re-equip our sorcerer's staff and then retool our look. Let's go back to the ring knight armor. Not, not as good in stats as dragon slayer armor, but every bit as cool looking in my humble opinion. Switch up the leggings to something... Uh, ooh, Ruin Leggings is pretty cool. What else can we do? That might, be, that might be the best we can do for the moment, which is still really neat. Okay. Yeah, not a bad look. Oh, and, and I mean, we gotta get the crown back on. I mean... Oh, okay. Well, if we're gonna do that, we're gonna have to get... We're gonna have to take not as cool pants, unfortunately. I hate that. I hate having to wear lame pants. It's truly a first world problem. Um, you know what? I, I could always wear a skirt, I guess. You know, I hear it's, uh, you know, once you wear a skirt, you don't go back. It's, re it's truly freeing, you know, just kind of the mobility it gives you. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Ask the Scottish about that if you have further questions. Um, <laughs> so... Honestly, finish that a bit quicker than I had uh, anticipated. So, where do we go from here? I guess we just go back to the ringed inner wall. Uh, oh, you know what else we should do? Hang on. I know this is kind of uh, anticlimactic. Or not. I don't know. I, I enjoy this, but I do want to continue our... our uh, our little lore um, exploration, our, our lore roundup, if you will. Just because I think it is something that is a, an essential part of the game, to, you know, essential part of appreciating it, rather. Um, so we will go up to Ludlith, and let's also check out the soul for Medir as well, while we're at it. I think he's the only new soul that we've gained since uh, last time. Uh, so here we go. Soul of Dark Eater Medir. One of the twisted souls steeped in strength. Use, etc, etc. Medir, des descendant of arch dragons, was raised by the gods and owing to his immortality was given a duty to eternally battle, uh, given a duty to eternally battle the dark. A duty that he would never forget even after the gods perished. But it would seem that because he was, he ate so much dark, you know, given his name, that it kind of consumed him in the end. I mean, it's a very Artorius um, arc, isn't it? Like, you're kind of there to be the bulwark against a, an almost unstoppable uh, nether force. But even somebody as great as Artorius and somebody as powerful as Medir cannot hold out forever, right? And so I'm sure even with their great strength, they became corrupted and uh, thus we, thus, you know, you can kind of think of what we did there as a mercy killing. In a lot of situations, um, we kind of go in there and, and it feels very much like we're the bad guy, like we're disturbing somebody in their home or, their, or, an, or a creature in their natural habitat. But in this particular situation, as with Artorius, if I'm not mistaken, it feels like the corruption has already occurred, and so this is probably in the best interests of everybody, is the impression I'm getting. Okay. Uh -huh. So, so uh, where were we? Where did we leave off? Um, well, I'm sure we've gained some souls. 
since, uh, I guess, I guess we just would have gained, um, Madeir, so we'll see if we, if there's anything that we would have missed. Uh, there we go. Soul of Dark Year to Madeir. I think this is where we're at right now. The Frayed Blade. A dragon weapon symbolizing Dark Eater Madeir. The once exquisite blade is now stained black and frayed at the hilt. Without its sheath, it will soon crumble into nothing. Skill holds. Assuming holding stance in which a normal attack sends a shock wave along the earth, and a strong attack commences a series of slashes. Hmm. So, if he was given the charge to defend against the dark by a god, would that be like a nameless king reference? Because Gwyn was very much anti-dragon no matter what, right? Which is why his son, the nameless king, was banished. So, if Medir was given a charge by the gods, it was either probably, you know, the nameless, one, nameless king himself or some other hitherto unknown, uh, like, deity, right? I'm trying, I'm trying to read between the lines. Oh, and this is also another... This is another, uh, Medir, uh, craftable. Memory of an old sword found deep within Medir. This sorcery uses souls to grant form to the thought and attack with it. Attacks are coupled with light waves, and sustaining the stance before attacking increases their speed and potency. The sword is named after Moonlight, but it is slightly different than the one fashioned of the Pale Drake Seath. Perhaps it is rooted in an older memory from not long after the beginning. Interesting. So, that either means somebody attacked Medir and left their sword in it, maybe the deity that was being referenced, or, I mean, this is pretty dark, but is it a situation where somebody, like, stabbed themselves with a sword and then turned into a dragon? I mean, that's what Osiris was trying to do, right? Not, not the stabbing part, but the turning into the dragon part, right? Like, people have been known to change their form. Uh, I don't know. Definitely food for thought. Uh, Dragon Slayer Great Axe is, I believe, where we're at now. Melted Iron Great Axe that one f once formed part of the Dragon Slayer armor. Thickly imbued with the power of lightning. Use the skill to draw out, or draw upon the techniques used to slay the Arch Dragons. Falling Bolt. Hold Axe high in the air to gather fierce lightning and smash ground to whip the bolts to the ground. Yorm's Great Machete. Yorm once lumbered on the front lines with a great shield, but one day, in place of his shield, a left-hand notch was added to his machete, enabling the smashing technique that would become the legacy of his later years. Warcry let out a spirited warcry that temporarily boosts the attack and enables a crushing strong attack. I mean, he should probably take up uh, being a, a butcher in retirement, right? Vort's Great Hammer. Wielded by Vort, the Outrider Knight of the Boreal Valley, weapon is imbued with frost and causes frostbite. Frost accumulates in the body, causing frostbite, which saps one's health, lowers absorption, and slows stamina recovery. Perseverance, anchor weapon in the earth to temporarily boost poise, damage reduced while activated. The Old King's Great Hammer of the Old Demon King. This weapon has survived since Old Isolith and is imbued with remnants of the Chaos Flame. Molten Perseverance, Anchor Weapon and Earth to temporarily boost poise, and use Strong Attack to repeatedly stab Earth to trigger Molten Explosions. That's pretty metal. Like, you have to have, like, a like a heavy metal band playing in the background if you use this weapon. That's that's the rules. Arstor's Spear, one of the curses that festered within the belly of the Greatwood. Oh, one of the first bosses we fought. Uh, and a terrible weapon favored by Earl Arstor the Impaler. The spear is enwreathed in rotten, heavily poisonous meat. Defeating foes restores HP. Ooh, that seems powerful. Shield Splitter. Take a large step forward and make a single focused thrust to puncture enemy shields and inflict damage. Very cool. Dragon Slayer Sword Spear. A dragon hunting weapon from the Age of the Gods. The earliest form of the cross spear, serving as both sword and spear. Its owner was the Nameless King and Deific... Uh, was the nameless king and deific hunter of dragons. The sword spear is imbued with lightning, of which he was the heir, being, you know, Gwyn's uh, flesh and flesh and blood. Falling bolt. Hold sword spear high in the air to summon fierce lightning that descends upon distant foes. That sounds really cool. And actually, it's surprisingly got higher dex requirements than uh, than strength. Man, there's so many weapons it would be fun to try, but so little time. Gundir's halberd. 
halberd of Gundir the Champion received when he was charged with his duty. This old cast iron halberd has the power to break poise and is said never to crumble, seeming to suggest that Gundir was fated to eternal service from the beginning. Champions charge, hold spirit waste and charge at the foe and use momentum to transition into a sweeping strong attack. Gundir being, I suppose, an ashen one or a or a chosen one, the chosen undead, in a in a different time, different place, different multiverse. But we never got a cool halberd, even though we were charged with duty, so I don't know. I'm a little salty about that, I guess. Why can't I get a cool sword or a cool axe? Frida's great scythe, though here we go. A great scythe wielded by Sister Elfrida, with curved blade thinly coated by painted world frost that easily breaks the guard of shields. In the painting, the scythe is a symbol of a long-lost home, possibly explaining Elfrida's preference for it. The skill is Elfrida's stance. Conjure a magic bladed support scythe into left hand while the great scythe remains in the right, a stance derived from Elfrida's former swordsmanship. Use normal attack to leap forward and swing twice, or strong attack to coat the earth with running frost. So, the scythe is a symbol of a long-lost home. Is that a reference to, like, the Boreal Valley? I'm trying to think, like, what area, what world is known for its use of scythes? I'm trying to remember if there's any kind of, like, icon iconography that I can recall. I mean, obviously, um... What's her name? Priscilla Crossbreed. She had a scythe, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I guess painted ladies uh, think alike. Think alike. Rose of Arendelle, a flail used by the bulbous, that's unkind, father of the painted world to shred his own skin, producing blood to appease the flame. Both a weapon and a miracle catalyst. Arendelle, being the restorer of the painted world, knew that it was painted with blood, and only blood could protect the secret. Awakening. Violently flail oneself to trigger an awakening that temporarily boosts the strength of miracles, just as the good father used the rose himself. A little technique that's, uh, that's known as self-flagellation, in case you didn't know that. The rose. I wonder what the significance of, of the rose is. Like a, like a corpse rose? I don't know. Demon's Fist. Demonic fist that burns with fiery essence. Its wielder can release this power through the use of its skill. When two-handed, fists are equipped to each hand. For the ultimate uh, uh, person who who prefer, prefers fisticuffs, I assume. Flame Whirlwind. Spin, spin through opponents with abandon. Flaming fists outstretched. Using a strong, strong attack while spinning utilizes your momentum to slam the ground with both fists. That is pretty metal as well. Dark Moon Longbow. Longbow of Dark Moon Gwendolyn, who is gradually devoured by Aldrich. This golden bow is imbued with powerful magic and is most impressive with moonlight arrows. Infuse a readied arrow with Duke Dark Moon Essence, granting it magic damage and the ability to pierce shields. Then we have Dragon Slayer Great Shield. Melted iron shield that once formed part of the Dragon Slayer armor. The shield offers high protection to lightning, which the Dragon Slayer commanded as his own and its skill has faint echoes of the Dragon Slayer's own fighting style. Shield Bash. Without lowering your guards, strike the enemy with the shield to knock them back or stagger them. Works while equipped in either hand. That seems very useful to uh, get a few quick, easy hits in. Yorm's Great Shield. Great Shield used long ago by Yorm the Giant. Increases the user's poise. Yeah, you think? I would imagine so. As a lord, Yorm risked everything and fought unflinchingly as a one-man vanguard. Following the loss of the one he wished to protect, he forsook his shield. And the loss of the one he wished to protect was... Not sure. Not Siegvard, certainly, because he... I mean, they were friends, but he wasn't lost, per se, right? Uh, I assume it was maybe like a, a Lord of Cinder or something that he chose to take the mantle on, because he's like, well, if nobody else is going to do it, I better step up to the plate. Havel's Ring. Neat. A ring for warriors keen on heavy accoutrement. Increases max equipment load. This ring was named after Havel the Rock, the battlefield compatriot of Gwyn the First Lord. The art of war has been a constant since ages past, and those who would follow in Havel's footsteps are no fewer than now, few, fewer now than in his own day, because there are lots of Havel cosplayers, for lack of a better term. Fake Havels. Pretender Havels. Prisoner's Chain. 
portion of a steel chain used to restrain Gundir. Gain vigor, endurance, and vitality, but take extra damage. A prisoner is one who has staked everything on a belief, a proclivity most apparent in the greatest of champions. And last but not least, the Pontiff's left eye. Bewitched ring that Pontiff Sullivan bestowed upon his knights. Recovers HP with successive attacks. Knights who peer into the black orb are lured into battles of death, transformed into frenzied beasts. No wonder the Pontiff only provides these rings to those dispatched to foreign lands. I know we've read this before, but it's just, it's really cool. If I were to make anything, this is certainly the one that is the most tempting. The HP on successive attacks, with the sheer number of attacks that we do, with a uh, sword Twin Blades, like, that seems very, very strong. But... We're not we're not gonna we're not gonna break our proud tradition now of uh of hanging on to our our souvenirs of bosses defeated. Maybe on a new game plus I'll I'll explore with it uh, a little bit, but for now, you know, I prefer to have uh, have the lore accessible and just think think about what, what might be. So uh, as we draw close to the end of the episode, I do just wanna kinda peek around the corner. And, uh, well, I guess there's no reason to hop off this elevator early, right? Anymore. Now we can just ride it properly all the way down. Imagine that, riding an elevator normally, the way it was designed to be. Not in my Dark Souls. And let's just look around here. Oh, man. Wow, what a cool view. Are we really not going to be able to get the opportunity to, like, go down there into some of these cool, like, castle buildings? It feels like this might be the end. I don't know. This church? Maybe there's something beyond the church. I don't know. But uh, we'll, we'll call it here. What an absolutely stunning vista. An absolutely fantastic fight. And uh, really nice just to catch up on some of the final bits of lore to, uh, to sort of chat about with you guys. So thanks so much for watching. Next time, into the church. And uh, come what may, cannot wait to see what we face next. And I'll see you then.